Hello everyone and welcome to the Google Partners Academy on Air. It's fantastic to have you all here today. That's right, the countdown to Retail Peak is officially here and today's sessions are designed to make sure that you are ready to maximize profitable growth during peak. As you might remember from June's sessions, my name is Sarah Jane Cowman and I lead our retail product and sales activation team for EMEA. Our team supports our customers and our agencies in terms of achieving their business objectives and accelerating overall retail growth. We have a lot of fantastic content to discuss today, but first off, I'm gonna delve into some of the behaviors that are shaping our 2021 peak. Last year, digital sales grew by an incredible 50% year over year to 1.1 trillion. And in Q4, retail searches grew 3X versus Q4 2019. 2021 deems to be no different in terms of continued growth. The EMEA holiday peak is anticipated to grow with e-commerce alone forecasted to rise 11.3%. That just highlights the incredible opportunity that we all have to capitalize on. Not only have we seen growth in online sales and queries, but we've also seen changes in how customers shop and how they use search to solve for their shopping needs. Looking for stock in advance of online or in-store purchases. It's really clear that we're operating under a very changing environment, but the question remains, which of the new trends and behaviors that emerged in the last year are likely to stick in the mid to long term? And how can we pull apart what's a short-term reaction and what has the potential to sustain and why? According to a research by Kantar, 52% of people believe that they will maintain their new behaviors post-pandemic. So now let's take a quick look at what those new behaviors actually are. First of all, let's consider more discerning customers and the types of behavior that this is generating. We've seen over the past year that consumers are going out of their way to shop smart and value is top of mind. You can see from this chart the growth year over year for some key search terms that show us people's interests in discounts, used products or sales. People wanted to minimize spending and protect their finances, and that behavior has sustained since then. We believe that this trend will continue. The triggers and motivations and the ability to save will be present. Ongoing uncertainty will continue to fuel money concerns and saving habits. Retailers will need to reinforce the reward, the satisfaction of finding quality products at a good price, which can also lead to customer loyalty and repeat purchases. But being discerning doesn't mean just being price driven. For some time, we've seen increasing interest in sustainability, ethical businesses and organic products. This interest has kept growing and shows no signs of slowdown. We also believe that this trend will stick. Consumers have built their knowledge on the topic and retailers have increased their offerings. The rewards and the motivation will still be there. However, we need to keep an eye on triggers. Lockdown gave us the mental space to reappraise our choices. Post COVID, retailers and brands should continue to reinforce the satisfaction of doing the right thing and a values-based approach to shopping. Related to this, people are using digital tools to explore their physical environment. Searches for near me have been growing for a long time and in 2020, they reached new levels. Here, the whole habit wheel is likely to endure and the trigger of convenience likely to stay as consumers have gotten used to this way of shopping. Consumers will continue to explore new ways of shopping, which they developed during the pandemic. We can see here the percentage increase in searches for delivery and mobile apps, while searches for opening hours have declined. What's especially interesting is that the digital channel has entered the convenience space even for essentials. Along the bottom here, you can see really significant uplifts in searches for things like milk delivery or meat delivery. There's been a mentality shift here in terms of what delivery is actually for. This convenience is extremely motivating for consumers. They've tried it, they've seen that it works. And in the future, the shift is most expected on the triggers as mobility will resume to a new level and our movement patterns will be altered. This chart shows searches for should I, can I, ideas and design. 
we see exploratory behaviours increase across much of last year. As digital consumer maturity grows, we see more complex search patterns appearing, such as simple house design. The month-on-month -month rise of these queries continues to be robust. We expect this trend to continue. Consumers have learned that brands and businesses provide engaging virtual experiences. However, the experience of browsing and shopping in-store delivers different benefits. Depending on the category, the person and the situation, online or physical will be the most rewarding choice. Okay, so now we understand the key consumer behaviours that are likely to sustain throughout 2021 key peak dates, such as Singles Day, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and the pre-holiday peak. However, although these are key dates, holiday peak is weeks, it's not just days. Interest in deals, gifts, and last minute buys occur throughout the peak season, up to and even during the holidays. Queries for Black Friday are expected to start in October and span 10 weeks into December. Okay, so now that we understand the key behavior shaping 2021, let's jump forward and take a look at some of the tools and guidance that we have for activating peak budgets and understanding peak trends throughout this period. As you're all well aware, budgets are critical to driving profitable growth during peak. As you know, we need to uncap budgets, adjust goals and targets, and allocate budgets in alignment with informed forecasting. So we have some great tools to help you plan for peak budgets. First off, we have OptiScore recommendations. These will give you real-time budget recommendations tailored to your account's performance. We then have Performance Planner. This allows you to forecast and plan budgets throughout peak. Auction Insights will also allow you to analyze your competitive position versus other retailers. And finally, Retail Category Reporting allows you to monitor your top category click share and performance across text and shopping ads. As well as budget tools, we also have some amazing tools to help you understand and capitalize upon peak trends. Firstly, we have the best sellers report. So this shows you your most popular brands and your products, and if you currently carry them in your feed. This can help us pinpoint seasonal trends as well as identify the products that would benefit from increased bids or budgets. We then have our pricing report, which shows you an average price across competitors for the products that you are selling. This can help you understand the price at which other retailers are successfully attracting clicks, as well as aggregate metrics on benchmark prices. Our demand forecasts show any upcoming trends predicted to start over the next 180 days when demand is likely to start increasing and by how much and for how long. Lastly, you can use Google Trends to understand how often users are searching for certain queries or topics and compare with different search terms, time periods and regions. This, this data can give an insight into the changes in demand, peak periods for certain queries and growing or declining trends to help inform your strategy. As we wrap up this section, let me give you a sneak peek as to what you can expect throughout the rest of the sessions today. We'll delve into measurement solutions and how they're essential for driving profitable growth during peak. We'll look at the dynamic power of search as well as delve into the YouTube opportunities. We'll also look at some international growth opportunities. We also have a fireside chat with AdWords Robot and S Marketeer. But now I'll hand you over to Brendan and Natish from our EMEA NextGen measurement team who guide you through all of the measurement best practices that you need to know for driving profitable growth during peak. Thank you so much for tuning in and hope you enjoy the rest of the sessions today. Hello and welcome to the Measurement Best Practice section of today's Academy on Air. I'm Brendan and I'm joined by my colleague Natish and we are both product leads for privacy-centric measurement here at Google. For the next 10 minutes, we will be discussing privacy-centric measurement and why it's crucial to retailers. And what are the best practices that you need to be doing to get the most out of your measurement strategy? Natish, what's on your mind when it comes to retail peak season this year? Hello everyone, Brendan, the biggest thing top of my mind is that this will be a different 
holiday season for our retail advertisers. This year, their customers will not just only care about deep discounts and faster deliveries, but will also greatly care about online privacy. Because of increased awareness among customers regarding online privacy and incoming government regulations, our retail advertisers need help navigate this world of deprecating cookies. At Google, we will help our retail partners by making sure their measurement and tagging issues are solved so that they can achieve higher ROI this holiday season from their Google investments. Up-to-date measurement fundamentals are key to give retailers the full picture and allow them to make the smartest decisions they can on their Google spend this year. We have seen this from retailers such as ASOS, and with their use of enhanced conversions, they were able to better understand the value that YouTube was driving for their business. ASOS saw substantial gains from enhanced conversions across YouTube and search, with an 8.6% lift in conversion rate across search and a 31% lift in conversion rate across YouTube for action. It's possible that there are high value conversions happening on browsers such as Safari that your smart bidding campaigns are not optimizing towards. Google's privacy centric measurement products are not just important for conversion measurement, but they are also very critical for downstream products such as smart bidding and attribution. Smart bidding and attribution won't be able to perform at their best if account does not have correct tags in place. Global site tag, also called a site-wide tag, is the most basic privacy-centric measurement solution on which other advanced products such as Enhanced Conversions, Consent Mode, and Google Analytics 4 will be deployed. These all private privacy-centric measurement products together will help improve automation and modeling capability of our Google Ads campaign, which will result in higher profitable growth for our advertisers. I have spoken with many retailers who are looking to their agencies to help guide them through these changing times of privacy. Agencies can help accelerate trans transformation today and future-proof things for retailers by helping them collect and activate first-party data. This is an opportunity for agencies to adapt to privacy-centric measurement solutions that will help mitigate conversion loss for your clients. If data gaps are not addressed, your clients will see performance impact downstream on smart bidding and automated campaigns. The digital ads ecosystem is changing and we're moving from the precision age to the predictive age. That's correct, Brendan. This changing ecosystem has put a lot of challenges in front of our advertisers. The whole system was dependent on third-party cookies since 1994 to understand their conversion me measurement and understand what ROI they achieved from their media campaigns. With deprecation of support for third-party cookies, this is at risk. Yes, absolutely. And we have the Google site tag to help mitigate things like Apple's ITP. And it's the foundations for our private-centric measurement solutions. It helps to easily collect first-party data and also helps protect you from the upcoming Chrome changes where third-party cookies are going to be deprecated. That's great to know, Brendan. But what about loss of support for first-party cookies in long run? Yeah, great question, Natish. And for that, we've got Enhanced Conversions, which utilizes cookie-less solutions to continue to measure and track conversions limited by browser changes. It helps advertisers to get 5% higher um, conversions on search and up to 12% higher conversions on YouTube. The feature uses a secure one-way hashing algorithm that will hash your first-party data, such as email addresses it before sending it to Google. The hash data is then matched with Google, with Google user accounts to help attribute campaign conversions from events such as clicks and views. That's amazing, Brendan. Do you also have something to help our advertisers navigate the oncoming regulatory changes which are happening in various countries? Yes, absolutely, Natish. I've got your back. Consent mode, it allows you to adjust how the Google tags behave depending on the status of consent for users on your site. On average, consent mode modeling can get more than 70% of conversions that are lost due to consent choices on your site. Now, I would like to take this opportunity to introduce Google Analytics 4. 
Google Analytics 4 gives superpowers to our retail advertisers with reports which can predict purchase probability, predict churn probability, and even product next 28 day revenue. Yeah, that sounds absolutely amazing. Really looking forward to seeing more of the features from Google Analytics 4. But to get started with Google Analytics 4, it requires you to start collecting data from scratch. So it's our recommendation that you get started as soon as possible. We advise this so that you can start collecting data from this peak season that you can use in your budget planning and also benchmarking for peaks next year. This brings us to the end of this conversation. The two key takeaway I would really want all of you to leave from today's conversation are, first, if you really want to make most of this holiday opportunity, you need to leverage Google's privacy-centric measurement solutions. Second, the privacy journey has just begun and clients are turning towards their agencies to really help them navigate these challenging times. Thank you for your time today. Hello everyone and welcome to another exciting session of the day. Now we'll focus on how you can prepare a perfect search and shopping strategy for the peak season. Later on, we'll hand it over to Katarina for a fireside chat with two of our excellent agencies. I will co-present this session together with Owen, our regional search specialist, who will now focus on search excellence and coverage. Thanks for that. Hi guys, my name's Owen. I am a product specialist on our search team here in Google. Uh, in this section, I'm going to take you through some of the best practices to keep in mind around search excellence and coverage in preparation for peak season this coming Q4. Before we get into that, I thought it was important to just look at a few focusing facts to set the scene in terms of how competitive this coming Q4 is expected to be. So what we've seen recently is 23% of online shoppers are now starting their research period at least three to six months in advance of the peak season, which just highlights how important it is to be discoverable during this period. We're also seeing that 81% of online shoppers during the pandemic were using search to discover new brands. So it's important then to be discoverable during this period as well. And just in general, we're seeing a real change in the way users are using search. So we've seen a really big increase in more ambiguous type queries, such as best affordable and available near me. And in general, we're just seeing a really big trend in terms of the way users are searching for these more ambiguous long tail queries, which are very difficult, if not impossible to capture using a traditional keyword setup of having lots and lots of exact match keywords, trying to anticipate how users are searching. In order to do this, it's really important that we look at two things. Do we have the right targeting within our accounts to capture these more ambiguous long tail queries? And do we have the right creatives in place to ensure that we have high ad ranking for these new queries we're now appearing against? Without a high ad ranking, one of two things is gonna happen. Either we're gonna pay an inflated price to appear in that auction, or we're not gonna be in the auction at all. So it's really important that we're placing emphasis on the quality of our creatives. So I'm gonna bring you through a step-by-step -step approach to ensuring that we have the right targeting and the right creatives in place well in advance of this coming Q4. Starting with the most important piece here, broadening our targeting using broad match keywords paired with smart bidding. Broad match can capture all of the same queries as our exact and phrase match keywords can capture, plus many, many more. And what this means when paired with smart bidding is that we will only enter into the auctions that are likely to contribute towards our smart bidding goal, because smart bidding can choose to enter us into the auction where it makes sense and opt us out of the auction where it doesn't make sense. So broad match and smart bidding go really go hand in hand here. So this isn't just because we've improved vastly in terms of our smart bidding algorithms. We've also made huge product changes and improvements to the way broad match keywords behave. And these signals are only available on broad match keywords 
and are not available in other match types like exact match or phrase match. So our product team have made huge changes here and they've started to include things like dynamic search ad technology, where we're using the landing page as an additional filter to understand the context of that landing page. We're also looking at other keywords within that ad group to get a better understanding of theming. We're looking at users' previous search behavior. We're looking at their, the user location just to get a better understanding of relevance. And what this means that on average, when we pair smart bidding with broad match keywords, we drive on average a 25% increase in conversions and a 12% increase in conversion value, whilst maintaining that CPA or ROAS goal that smart bidding is aiming towards. So there's a couple of different ways to go about implementing broad match keywords. Firstly, we should be looking at the OptiScore recommendations within the account. OptiScore will recommend that we update our existing keywords to broad match versions for campaigns that are already using a smart bidding strategy. And this recommendation will come with impact stats in terms of the volume of conversions we should expect to drive or the volume of conversion value we should expect to drive by implementing this. If we want to do this under a more test this under a more controlled environment, then we can do that from the recommendations tab itself. So we may want to test this well in advance of peak to get an understanding as to how this can impact our overall performance. The OptiScore recommendation comes with a one click apply button for drafts and experiments. The three little dots beside the apply button will allow you to set up a drafts and experiments and you can choose to do this via a 50-50 traffic split where we'll be able to measure the impact of broad match plus smart bidding versus your existing keyword setup. Remember to do this well in advance of peak so we can learn from this and have it in place across all of our campaigns in time for those busy periods. One advertiser that went down this route was German uh, online retailer My Toys Group and they tested broad match plus smart bidding with two of their top brands, Mirapodo and MyToys.com. And my to what they saw from doing this test was an incredible improvement in terms of the volume of conversions and the volume of conversion value that they were driving while maintaining that return on ad spend that they had set out to achieve. The next step in this journey in terms of having full coverage across the board is using dynamic search ads. So dynamic search ads, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with at the moment, but this is an ad type that does not use keywords. Instead, it uses the content on your landing page to match queries to that content and will serve users the most relevant ad and send them to the most relevant landing page based on that query. If we're yet to use uh, dynamic search ads and we don't have them set this up yet, we can start by doing this using either the categories option or landing pages from existing ad groups. If we're already using dynamic search ads, then we should aim to expand our coverage by targeting more and more of our web pages and moving to something like all web pages under smart bidding. Remember, dynamic search ads can be set up either as a standalone campaign or following the simplified account structure best practices, including a dynamic search ad ad group into our existing keyword campaigns. That way we can manage the entire budget and the smart bidding goal for that category on site. Another example of an advertiser who used dynamic search ads as part of their fully automated strategy was Massimundo, an Argentinian retailer. They included dynamic search ads as part of their wider strategy and saw really strong results in 2020 versus 2019. So make sure we're covering all bases with dynamic search ads as well as broad match targeting because the two can go hand in hand. The final step in terms of ensuring we have full coverage is to spot trending queries. Or ensure we have targeting for those trending queries as they come up using the OptiScore recommendation for add new keywords. This recommendation will suggest to add additional keywords into your existing ad groups based on trending queries within the vertical itself. And this recommendation will always drive net new traffic to your account because we will only suggest new keywords if we do not have coverage for them already. So make sure to keep an eye out for that recommendation and check it on a weekly basis to ensure we're covering all bases. Finally, having the right 
search targeting in place is half of the battle. We also need to ensure that we have relevant enough creatives to allow us to enter into that option. Now that we're casting our net wider with broader targeting, we need to ensure that we have relevant creatives that match those queries. So using responsive search ads is crucially important here. Ensuring all of our ad groups have responsive search ads and aiming for an ad strength of good or above while continuously optimizing our responsive search ads via the OptiScore recommendations on an ongoing basis. In fact, advertisers who pair responsive search ads with broad match keywords and smart bidding drive on average an incremental 20% in conversions um, on top of everything else we have just discussed. So this is really clear that having the right ads in place is crucially important for this uh, coming Q4, this peak season, because the auction is gonna be very intense and highly competitive. So anything we can do to set ourselves apart from our competitors is definitely worthwhile. Okay, and that is it for me for the search excellence coverage and creative section of this webinar. Please make sure that we're putting these best practices in place well in advance of peak season so we're able to benefit from the strong performance these, um, these solutions offer. And with that, I'm going to now hand you over to Magda to bring you through some of the best practices related to our smart shopping campaigns that you can put in place for this coming peak season. Thank you very much. Thank you, Owen. So let me give you another piece of advice for this peak season. Make sure that all your campaigns are automated and they stay automated throughout the whole peak season. In the past, you might have preferred to actually switch them for some periods of time onto manual bidding, but it is no longer recommended and it is no longer the best practice. Also, our algorithms have improved greatly since. So here are the three reasons why smart bidding is especially important now. So firstly, in these dynamic and volatile times, the smart bidding will allow you to adjust the bids to unpredictable changes in demand and drastic changes in auction dynamics. Secondly, it will not only take into consideration your account data, but also the data of the ecosystem and take a look holistically at the changes and predicted changes in the queries. Thirdly, I know it is very important for you to make sure that the budgets are under control and this is totally possible while maintaining the automated bidding strategies. So you can create a structure, you can adjust the bids and you can adjust the budgets to make sure that the objectives of your client are met. So now you have your automated bidding strategies in place. And now what? A very important piece of advice is to actually start early. So start adjusting your budgets and the bids early on, minimum four, six weeks in advance. So you know that actually the users would start to research the products very, very early on. And actually you might see the demand for your clients' products getting bigger and bigger with time. So for example, me, I actually start creating my Black Friday shopping list already in September. Very important thing to underline here is that if the conversion rate will not be changing by more than 30% over a span of a few days, which probably will happen in the period leading up to the peak season, it is okay just to gradually change the ROAS targets. No extra action is needed for your part because the smart bidding algorithm will handle well any changes in demand of this kind. But what if you expect that actually the conversion rate will change very drastically, which might actually happen during the Black Friday weekend? Then there are two actions you can take, whichever you feel more at ease with. So first of all, you can just manually change the ROAS targets of the campaigns ahead of the time that you expect the conversion rate to change. This might be the case for the Black Friday weekend, most probably. So what you would do, you just, on Thursday, you go to campaign settings and you change the ROAS target. The second thing you can do would be to apply the seasonality adjustment. So basically, you would just tell the algorithm that during this period, between this day and this day, the conversion rate is expected to, for example, double. And this will give uh, the algorithm sufficient information to react 
accordingly to the expected changes and not leave it by surprise. So now you know that automated binning strategies are very important during peak season and it's crucial for you to keep them on throughout the whole peak season. So now let's zoom in on to your shopping strategy. First thing first, make sure that all your shopping campaigns are actually smart shopping campaigns. Why? What we have observed is that those campaigns just simply work amazingly. We have noticed that while maintaining the same ROAS, you can get even 30% more conversion value than with traditional shopping campaigns. And this is especially visible during the Black Friday weekend. Next, smart shopping campaigns are in place. Now let's take care of the structure. So make sure that you are aware of the objectives of the client for this peak season, the revenue, objectives, the budget, and also what products they want to prioritize and they want to increase the visibility for. Make sure that you create a special campaign for those products uh, and you create it also early, early on. Uh, make sure that you also set a very aggressive ROAS target, more aggressive than for the other product groups, and as you gradually adjust it with time as you approach the peak season. When segmenting the campaign, important, very important thing to keep in mind, try to avoid over-segmentation. As a rule of thumb, make sure that whenever you create a separate campaign, that it will record at least 100 conversions per month. So, how you can adjust the structure to feature the holiday products. The best way and the easiest way to do it would be to use the custom labels in the Merchant Center. So you get the list of the holiday products that your client wants to prioritize and you just label them as, let's say, holiday merchandise. Then on Google Ads side of things, you create a specific campaign for those products and you set it to be filtered to those holiday merchandise products. And then you set a specific ROAS target that is more aggressive than for the rest of campaigns. This ROAS target can actually be just maximize conversion value strategy, or you can set a ROAS target of even like 50%. But make sure that this target is still in line with the profitability goals of your client. So now let me give you two additional pieces of advice to improve even better your smart shopping campaigns. First of all, peak season is the time for the users to actually seek new brands. According to the McKinsey study, nine out of 10 users, when they start to research for a product, they actually don't have a particular brand in mind. And also 40% of the users uh, actually discovered a new brand during last year's peak season. So this is an excellent opportunity for your client to get new customers. And what a better way to capture this opportunity than with the new customer acquisition. New customer acquisition is a feature that is only available to smart shopping campaigns and not other campaign types. And by activating this uh, feature on top of having the goal of online sale, you'll tell the algorithm to prioritize a bit more or a lot more the new customers uh, that are researching for your client's products. This feature is great, not only because it'll help your client get new customers, but also it'll position you, an agency, as a great business partner to your client, because you will not only take care of the short-term revenue goals, but also influence the long-time revenue and uh, help your client capture new, very valuable customers. So how does this feature work in practice and how are we able to detect if a particular user is a new customer or not? First of all, once the new customer acquisition feature is activated, then Google by default will just detect if this particular user has already purchased a product in the last 540 days or not, and it will determine if it's a new or returning customer. So there are also two additional methods to help the algorithm detect new versus returning customers, and those are great ways for you to stand out as an agency. First method would be to upload the customer list to Google Ads, 
And the second method would be to implement the global site tag. By implementing the global site tag, you can actually determine what it means for your client that a particular user is a new customer or not. However, this is a solution that is pretty complicated to put in place. So I would recommend it to implement it for very advanced clients. Last piece of advice, how you can improve the performance of smart shopping campaigns would be by uploading a video. So it has been observed by, that by adding a video to smart shopping campaigns, you can receive even 15% more conversions on the display network. And if your client doesn't have an existing video asset, no problem, because the smart shopping campaigns can create automatically videos based on the feed images available. So let's conclude. I have three key takeaways from you. So first of all, when creating smart shopping campaigns or restructuring them, make sure that you use custom labels to create a separate holiday campaign where you can feature the most important products for your client and the ones that they want to increase the visibility for. Secondly, six, four weeks in advance, gradually start adjusting the bids and budgets for your search and shopping campaigns to capture the increasing demand for the products. And thirdly, if you know that there will be a sudden change in conversion rate, like for example, during the Black Friday weekend, make sure that you either manually adjust the ROAS targets ahead of this weekend, or that you implement the seasonality adjustments. Thank you so much for staying with me. I hope this was very useful to you. And now let's hand it over back to Katarina, who will be chatting with the agencies to see how they actually implemented in practice the advice that I was just giving you. Hello everyone and welcome to the Academy on Air Countdown to Retail Peak. My name is Katharine de Vlieg and I work as EMEA's Retail Lead for Agencies. I'm always super excited to talk to our agency partners since they play a critical role in driving business impact for our retail advertisers. I'm joined today with two amazing agency leaders, Dennis from Edward Robot and Johannes from S Marketeer. Today, we're gonna to discuss how they are able to drive business impact for their retailers during peak moments. I'm also joined by Daria, who has immense experience with working with our agency partners and driving business impact for their retailers. But before I start with the questions, I would love everyone to introduce themselves. Dennis, I would love to kick off with you. Can you please introduce yourself as well as your agency? Good day, everybody. My name is Dennis Dubowski. I'm the founder of Edwards Robot from the Netherlands. At Edwards Robot, we are focused on developing innovative tools to help e-commerce clients grow and get their competitors out of business. We help around 3,500 merchants around the world, and I'm really happy to be here. Thanks, Dennis. It's absolutely great to have you here today. And Johannes, would you also please like to introduce yourself as well as your agency? Hello, my name is Johannes Wittlinger. I lead the Google Shopping Ads team at Smarketer. Smarketer is one of the leading Google Ads agencies in German market. And we have a special team for Google Ads in, in shopping. For every Google Ads challenge channel, we have an expert team. And we have a, yeah, we have a lot of different international clients. And we try to bring with our expert team the maximum out of Google Shopping. Thanks, Johannes. Super great to have you join today as well. Daria, could you also please introduce yourself? Hello everyone, my name is Daria and I lead the agency team here in the Dutch market at Google. My team is working closely with agencies like Edwards Robert and Smarketia and I'm super excited to be here today. Thanks Daria, thrilled to have your perspective as well. Let's kick off with the questions. Dennis, to start off with you, could you please share what kind of client objectives you are trying to achieve for your retailers? Yeah, that's a very good question. Because we deal with e-commerce clients, the following goals are the most common. The first one would be maximizing profit for each dollar spent in Google Ads, and the other one would be maximizing the amount of new clients. To maximize the profit, we not only take a look at return on ad spend, we often look at customer lifetime value, for example, because in some businesses, customers buy multiple times a year. We also take a look at attribution. 
If the customer buys direct, it doesn't mean it didn't interact with your ads. And we, of course, take a look at margins. Some products have higher or lower margins, and you need to take that into account as well. If the focus lies on the getting new customers, we try to focus on impressions. We try to increase reach. Think here about broad keywords, banners, and in some cases, lowering the return on ad spend for some product groups. In any case, we try to get clicks earlier in the customer journey, so you can remarket a little bit later and sell as well. Dennis, I'm very excited that you're sharing that you're using uh, broad match keywords, because not only will this help you to increase your reach, but we also see that leveraging broad match keywords will um, result into an increase in performance. Like Owen shared in the previous session, with the help of Broadmatch keywords, we experienced a 12% increase in value on average for target ROAS campaigns. Additionally, what I also really like that you shared is the fact that you already need to think about targeting the target ROAS goals in order to make sure that you're present because the shoppers are already researching what to buy for their loved ones. Johannes, could you also please share uh, what kind of client objectives you are trying to achieve for your retailers? Thanks, Katarina. The objectives we use depends on the goals of our clients. So together with our clients, we determine which metric is the best for him. And in Google Ads or Google Shopping especially, we have uh, one big advantage, advantage and we can manage the campaigns very performance oriented. So like Ben has said, um, we have a lot of revenue based metrics we use, but also we can use new customers or attract margin or even offline store sales. So we have a lot of opportunities with the metrics and there's a bit big mix. Thanks Johannes for sharing. Actually, what we find out is when we join the client calls and talk about customer objectives, they're very similar. The clients want to drive their revenue. They want to grow their business. They want to drive offline and online sales in a profitable way. What really differentiates the agency is how do they go about approaching this and helping the customers to achieve their goals. In my opinion, there are two factors that are successful for the agencies. One is really listening to your customers and really putting that in, in top of your mind. And secondly, it's always innovating through automation and product adoption that Google solutions offer. Could not agree more with you, Daria. Clients expect their agencies to be their strategic partners. And I'm super happy to hear that both uh, of you are fulfilling that role. Let's kick it off with the second question. Dennis, could you please share your strategy for peak? During peak season, volume and timing is key, but there are also some challenges. Overselling would be one. To overcome this, we use first party data from the client to help Google's algorithm. We look at sales velocity. This is the product quantity sold within a certain time. If our system predicts that the product will be sold out soon, we stop advertising on the product. The product will be sold organically anyway, plus this opens a budget for other products, which helps business grow overall. If you have an apparel type business where sizes matter, we look at which popular sizes are sold out. If the popular sizes are sold out, we stop advertising for the whole product. This way we minimize this return. Stock level issues is definitely something that a lot of retailers are experiencing during the pandemic, as well as during those peak moments, like you said. So I'm absolutely happy to hear that you are leveraging uh, first party data of the retailer in order to enrich the algorithm and make it understand which products to focus on and which products not to focus on to really maximize the returns for your retailers. Johannes, could you also share your strategy of peak 2021? The peak season always gives us the opportunity to gain market shares and new customers. We have high search volume and the customers want to buy. So one strategy is to focus on new clients. With the SSC and the new customer acquisition, we have the right tool for it. Also, at Marketer, we have a white paper which we share with the clients. Step by step, we have a to-do list to prepare perfect for peak season. Thank you, Johannes. I love the fact that you're publishing white papers and also the fact that you get the most out of the new customer acquisition feature to gain market share for your clients. Dennis, what about you? What are your plans for peak 2021? The strategy depends a little bit on the type of inventory. 
If the business sells the same products year over year, we look at the best-selling brands and products from the year before. This way we can spend most of the budget on the best sellers. For fresh inventories, it might be wise to get more eyeballs to your business two to four weeks in advance. This way you can build up your remarketing list and sell a little bit later. A strategy for that would be sending out an email or use broad keywords early in the customer journey funnel. I love that point, Dennis. That's what we've seen working really well, is what we call consistent advertising. By simply showing your ad consistently and effectively can help to keep your brand on top of the mind of the consumer, especially in the beginning of the purchase journey or consideration phase. Recent Google research has shown that actually just showing up your ad can convince between 18 to 44% of consumers to shift from their first choice brand to the brand they've just saw in the ad. Thanks, Daria, for sharing that. We will make sure to link the research into the resources page of the Academy on Air. And Johannes, what is your 2021 peak strategy? This year, it's important to do the homework. We need a clean data feed and the information which product is available and which not. A lot of our retailers are struggling with delivery from production worldwide. Google Shopping gives us an opportunity not just to use in-stock and out-of-stock, we also can use pre-order and back-order. So we can promote products even if they are not available in, in the online store yet. We can bring customers to the online shop, they can buy now and get a product later. Johannes, you're absolutely right. The algorithm is only as strong as the data that you put into it. So having a strong feed quality is absolutely key. Daria, what about you? How do you get ready with your agencies for peak? First of all, we are having holiday peak conversations with agencies right now, as we know that the customer purchase journey consideration starts way earlier. Secondly, we look at the customer goals together with the agencies. We review ROAS goals and targets, bidding strategies, customer profit margins. We are also happy to join any client conversations with the agencies together and share what's working well with other customers. Lastly, we bring better and product innovations to the conversation. We've seen that automated solutions with Google, like value-based bidding, AAR, customer acquisition feature, deliver great results for our customers, as the goal is to show the right ads to the right customer at the right time. And that often requires automation products that Google solutions can offer. Thanks so much, Daria, Dennis, and Johannes for this fireside chat. I personally learned a lot. I learned that it is important to put in the right data input into our algorithms and leverage first party data of the retailer in order to maximize returns for your retailers. Secondly, this is an ideal moment to acquire new customers by leveraging the new customer acquisition feature in smart shopping campaigns. Thirdly, you can increase your reach and make sure that your ads are present in front of advertisers by uh, using broad match keywords, by already lowering your target ROAS goals. And last but not least, um, it's important to start now because everyone is already researching what they will buy for their loved ones. Thanks so much for tuning in and I hope you're now all set to get ready for peak. Thanks for having me, bye bye and good luck. Thanks, it was a pleasure. Thank you so much for inviting me and thank you so much for our wonderful agencies. Have a successful peak, everyone. Hi everyone, and thank you very much for staying with us today. I know it has been a very long session so far and I'm very excited for what's coming next on how to build the best video strategy for your business. I know how busy the next few months and weeks will be for you and your clients, so I really want to make sure that you can make the most out of today's session. Uh, my name is Marco. I'm a regional product lead uh, working with Video Ad Solution. And uh, in my daily job, I try to help businesses build the best video strategy for their marketing objective. And it's a pleasure for me to introduce also Arsh, that is with us today. And now, let's have a look at the agenda of the day. The goal of the day is really to make sure that you can understand how to build the best video strategy for the upcoming retail season and make the most of our new feature and solution 
uh, for your strategy. With your two bots today, you can drive results better than ever before. And the reasons for that is that now we have video action campaign format that is optimized for uh, the conversion that is relevant for you. More specifically, with video action campaign, you can now get plus 200% uh, CTR at, at minus 40% CPA compared to a normal trigger campaign. At the same time, you can also get amazing results on a search strategy with plus 8% average conversion you can get on search and minus 4% CPA thanks to the video action campaign. One of the main reasons why you can get such a strong performance of video action campaign is definitely the targeting. More specifically, now we have the custom intent audiences, which leverage what users are now looking for on Google. We know that 86% of people who are looking for a specific product online today goes to Google. We can now target those people on YouTube to make the most out of the performance strategy we can build together. More than that, video action campaign now also offer the product feed extension, which will be key for the upcoming retail season if you also want to display your products below the video that communicate your message online. There are three key advantages of using product feed extension with a video action campaign. The first one is that you can now connect YouTube to the Google Merchant Center and have all the key products of your website listed directly on YouTube. The second point is that now you can also um, filter out the products that are most important for you and you can want to push and deliver to uh, your clients. And third, you can now optimize a strategy for CPA, controlling the cost per acquisition and optimize for the level of conversion that you want to reach. On average, advertisers that leverage video action campaign with the product feed can get up to 60% more conversion than those that use just to view in stream on YouTube. So definitely a key feature to leverage for the upcoming retail season. I'd like to share with you a great success stories of an advertiser that leveraged video action campaign with the product feed. And this is Julia. It's a great retailer that really wanted to test this solution um, to boost online sales. And they actually got amazing results, plus 36% of conversion rate and lowering uh, the CPA of 20%. This was a huge uh, and important result for their business. And now they're scaling their investment thanks to uh, this great feature. So I definitely recommend you to leverage video action campaign with a product feed to optimize everything for the right conversion that is relevant for your business. Finally, I also wanted to introduce you a new beta that you can add to the video action campaign, which is the target trolls or max conversion value. As you know now, you cannot just leverage and optimize your strategy for the number of conversion or the CPA. You can now control the return on ad spends and also the value of your conversion you want to get. So you can now really focus on the margin and the value of the conversion to optimize your strategy for what's important and relevant for your business. I'm gonna now hand it over to Arsh, who's gonna deep dive on the best practices when launching a campaign and also how to forecast and plan in advance what's coming next on your YouTube strategy. Thank you very much for your time today. Great. So thank you, Marco, for sharing the exciting update on video action campaigns, which are using value bidding now. Hi, everybody. I'm Arsh, and I lead video as a product in UKI and work closely with a lot of agencies in the cluster as well. So let's quickly move on to how do you actually oper operationalize the aspects of, of the setup of for video action campaigns? So I will first quickly share a very simple six-step checklist to set your video action campaigns and your clients up for success. So first and foremost, foremost is to use uh, Google Ads conversion tracking to capture the conversions which are really valuable for your client's business. So this could mean, for example, sales uh, uh, for your e-commerce client and the reason why it's also important to set and have Google Ads conversion tracking in place is to also future-proof your client's uh, measurement systems. We know that as we go forward, cookies will become less and less prevalent, and has, hence it's really important to have Google Ads conversion tracking, which is really creating those additional modeled conversions for you so that you don't lose a track or your clients don't lose a, a track of the conversions in the first place. Secondly, is to select the goal of the video action campaigns itself. 
So once you know what your client's objective is, let's say if it's driving sales during the really important retail peak or in the lead up, is it driving website traffic and building that sort of momentum to drive sales when the really important peak hits. So those are the goals that you may want to think about with your client and then feed it in the video action campaigns. The third and the next uh, really important bit is selecting the bidding strategy. So you could start off with TCPA bidding, which is basically bidding on a particular cost per customer acquisition. And you can use the suggested TCPA in Google Ads for your clients. So you don't have to uh, uh, think a lot about what you should be starting off with. Google Ads UI will do the heavy lifting and provide you with a suggested TCPA. Otherwise, if you want to, let's say, if your client is interested in driving as many conversions during a retail peak as possible within, let's say, a specified budget and is not so concerned about the cost per acquisition or the efficiency plays, then I would recommend leveraging maximize conversions. Audience is uh, an, an extremely important level as well when you, when you think about optimizing your video action campaigns. So I would recommend that you start off with custom audiences, which are, let's say, built off already really high performing search keywords. Uh, secondly, use remarketing lists. So uh, uh, before the lead up to the actual peak, if you've been running some sort of video for your client, you would already have remarketing lists automatically built in by Google Ads and just use them across both YouTube as well as your search and shopping campaigns. And last but not the least are customer match lists. So for example, your class client has shared the CRM list or existing customer base lists. You can basically build a customer match list on top of that, which will help the system find customers which are most likely to convert based on the signals provided by your existing customer base. Additionally, I would also recommend that you set up uh, and switch on audience expansion for your clients' campaigns. Now, this is really important, again, uh, given during the highly volatile retail peak, uh, you would want this, to give the system enough runway and enough sort of a runway to flex around with potential audiences who are most likely to convert during that highly volatile peak period. Last but not the least, ensure that you add product ad feeds to your campaign as well. So if you have a Google Merchant Center already set up for your client, you can basically talk with them and select the most important products or SKUs that you want to sell, your clients want, or your client wants to sell during that uh, retail peak, and you can add them to uh, your video action campaigns. Uh, that, that becomes an extremely crucial aspect of video action campaigns as well because you're leveraging people's attention at that moment and driving direct conversions from uh, watching the video itself. Now, uh, last, I would also recommend running at least five creative variants for your assets. So you, can, you don't necessarily need to have five different uh, production assets uh, in essence, but you can play around with changing, let's say, the click to action button or the headline text as well. Uh, the reason why we recommend at least a minimum of five is because through many panel researches we've done online, we find that at least five creative variants gives the system enough runway to flex around and optimize successfully when a retail peak hits. Great. So now that we've gone through the uh, checklist to set your uh, client's video action campaigns up for success, I will now come down to how do you actually view the reporting aspect of it and how do you make sense of it? So there are broadly two types of conversions that you would want to understand uh, in order to have that conversation with your client. One is a last click based conversion uh, model, which you're already familiar with, which is let's say you someone watched a video ad and then went to the client's website, converted, made a purchase. So that's your last click. The non-last click types are basically where a customer viewed your ad but didn't immediately convert, but let's say saw some other ad a in the final consumer journey and then converted. So those are broadly the two type of conversion actions available. Now, what we have for you uh, is that uh, we've simplified how to actually make sense out of this and report it back to your client. So I'll talk a bit about the reporting services in the coming slide now. Right, so we have a team of highly dedicated, motivated experts who are both data analysts and YouTube experts who prepared the full value of YouTube that I just spoke of. So you don't have to do the heavy lifting. They do it for you. 
and this covers both the full value of YouTube as well as sharing cross-channel networks. So really unpacking where YouTube actually influenced, let's say your other media channels. And also in case your client is running a lift study, be it brand lift or search lift, which becomes extremely important in the run-up to retail peak to see the uplift in uh, brand search keywords, they will also factor in those aspects while sharing the report with you. Now that's a very um, efficient way to sort of just get a reporting uh, a report in a, a couple of days to three days for your client. And there are two kinds of reports that you can sort of request for. One is a mid campaign report where let's say while the campaign is running, you want to share an update with the client. Another is once the campaign ends, you want to really share the full, uh, full view of how the campaign performance played out. And that's another kind of report you can request for. The way for you to request this is to reach out to your Google rep and they will help you help and share the reports with you. So last up is the final piece of the video puzzle, which are, as you might have guessed, uh, creatives. And we've heard a lot of feedback uh, uh, from all of you saying that how creative can sometimes be a roadblocker. Hence, we've come up with two services which can help simplify this pain point for you. So the first one is really more of a self-service tool, which is called the Video Builder tool. Uh, it basically is a, a platform where which renders static images, logos, text to you, very lightweight YouTube assets. The turnaround time is uh, in a few hours. Uh, this is the time that you take to sort of build uh, and add those inputs, and it's free of cost. You can uh, get yourself whitelisted for the Video Builder uh, uh, tool by reaching out to your Google Drive. The second is a slightly more up in the value chain. So if you want to have a slightly more heavyweight video asset, again, free of cost, we have the GTEC Premium Creative Services, which is a mouthful, but uh, in essence, what you need to understand is that we have a team of creative experts who again will use the inputs that you add into uh, the video builder tool, like your static images, your static logos, um, uh, text, and they will again create a, a, a high quality YouTube optimized uh, creative asset for you. So for them, the turnaround time is typically uh, three days and uh, it's again free of cost. I will recommend that you reach out to your Google rep again, if you would like to leverage these two uh, creative services we have for you. So that's it from my side. Um, I hope you found today's session useful and I wish you all the very best of luck for the upcoming retail peak and for your client success. Now on to the last session of Academy on Air, over to Rashida. Hi everyone, my name is Rochita and I'm a senior international growth consultant at Google. Thank you for your time so far on the Countdown to Retail Peak Academy on Air. This is the last segment and we are going to talk about international growth. Let's start with a number, $1.1 trillion. The 2020 holiday season was the biggest ever for digital retail sales globally, up 50% from the previous year. While we can't predict what the 2021 holiday numbers would look like, what we certainly know is that there's been a significant shift towards online purchasing. In Q4 2020, the retail queries were 3x higher than the previous year, signifying a major shift towards digital. So what does this mean for us? Peak is here and it's borderless. The consumer shift from offline to online opens doors to shopping internationally. And if you have a client that's looking to expand into international markets, Now's the time to put that plan into action. Global share for Retail Peak is growing at an unprecedented pace and faster than we thought. 47% of retail queries last year came in from North America, followed by Europe at 35%, and the rest of the world is significantly growing their peak share as well. And you know what's interesting in all of this? 58% of the consumers in Benelux and Nordics looked out for a new brand to shop from last year. What I'm going to talk about in the next 10 minutes is supporting your retail customers into three areas of international expansion. Whether your client is new to export or already exporting into new markets, this is going to be very relevant for you, so listen up. The first step is data and insights. 
Market Finder is a free service for businesses interested in expanding internationally. It provides tools, resources, and guides on how to prepare your retail business for international expansion. It is relevant for clients looking for incremental opportunities, footprint expansion, or if you're new to export. Search volumes and CBCs are based on the category and the recommendations are based on the industry weighted for taking into account a lot of search volumes, cost, disposable income, and any other factors that are relevant. Market Finder essentially breaks down export for you into very three simple steps. Identify your market, plan your operations, and set up your marketing. Let's look at how you would use this tool for incremental export. If you're an exporter looking to expand into your existing markets, two types of data from Market Finder would be very valuable for you. Firstly, increasing your market share and benchmarking it against your domestic market, but also the international players in that particular market. Those market leaders would help you determine the spot of uncaptured opportunity which you're particularly looking to expand into. And secondly, merchandising localization is very relevant as well. Just by improving language converges, you can really reach more audiences and capture value real quick. Let's take an example. In Switzerland, 58% of the queries come in from German customers. However, the remaining comes from languages such as Italian, English, and French. Just by making those language-specific campaigns, you can easily increase your reach by at least 32%. Now let's look at footprint expansion. If you're looking to identify what markets to start with, start a wide search and then narrow down your focus. Looking into query share as a part of international markets is extremely important. Where are those queries really coming from? What is my appetite of online shopping abroad? After that, you want to segment your data into three types of categories. Users. This includes your internet users, internet user growth, and GDP per capita. The industry. This is where Market Finder would help you find that infrastructure and consumption and demographic profile, including consumption numbers for household income, mobile phone users, and internet and broadband availability. And finally, the category demand, which brings you closer to your marketing activation, where you want to see how digital can help you capture that demand. Once done, a crawl, walk, run approach is always a very good idea. Start with markets that are very close to you, and have a similar consumer behavior, and then move to markets that have similar language synergies. And finally, look at the largest addressable opportunity in international markets. With this, let's move on to the next step, which is planning your operations. 80% of retailers told us that they struggle with one or more operational challenge when trying to expand online, which limits their growth and performance in an international market. Let's look at what these operational challenges really are. I'm going to act as a mystery shopper for four different websites and drop off for completely different reasons. I enter the first website and I see that the language is not as per my preferred choice. I would drop off. I move on to the second website and almost make a purchase when I see that my credit card is not getting accepted and they do not have any alternate payment method. I would again abandon the cart. I move on to the third website and looking for delivery and return options. However, I do not see any and no FAQ page. I would again drop off for poor customer experience. And finally, I'm making a purchase, but there's absolutely no option of an express delivery and I want my products to come immediately. I would drop off yet again. And just like me, 60% of the consumers would drop off the websites for reasons like these. Which brings me to the second point of retail international success of optimizing the customer journey and localizing it at every step. Localization is not just translations, it's about making intelligible an entire culture. And in order to ensure a smooth journey, you need to identify what those needy demands of your customers are. To optimize the customer journey and boost performance, four areas of operations are really critical for each of your retail customers. The first one is localization, which goes beyond translations to look into glossary, tone of voice, and conversation style of the brand. The second is payment methods, which involves localizing payment types for different markets, but also looking out for new trends such as buy now, pay later. The third step is customer experience, where you want to provide seamless customer service 
by providing chatbot, live chat, or translations and bilingual FAQs. And finally, the last part of the purchase funnel is logistics, where you want to provide a great experience of delivery and returns for your customers. Market Finder would help you with information across these areas in terms of partners, trends, and case studies. And this stage really builds that foundational architecture for the retail business and sets it up for success ahead of marketing campaigns. Which brings me to the third and final stage of international success, automation and efficiency in your marketing activities. This further involves three stages. The first stage is local media planning. When it comes to local media planning, you want to look out for simplicity, reach and performance. Smart shopping is one such product that really simplifies and automates international expansion for you. The second step is allocation of marketing budget. This involves looking out for those micro moments, but also those big peaks that really trigger the consumers to make a purchase. Holiday season is one such big peak, which is not just limited to Black Friday, but Cyber Monday and goes up till Christmas. And finally, you also want to look out for localization. And I can't stress enough that this is the make or break for any international campaign success and goes beyond just literal translations. The international growth via digital channels is becoming an increasingly strategic primary objective for a lot of retailers and agencies like yours have a very critical role to play, not just in terms of advisory, but also in terms of hands-on support. E-commerce acceleration globally is very fast at the moment, more than 21%, and you want to support your clients in going global. I hope you found this useful, and I'm going to pass it back to Katerina to help you summarize the entire event for today. Thank you. Thank you, Rosita. And welcome to the final part of the Academy on Air. Hi, I'm Katerina, and you might remember me from the Fireside Chat. I'm super excited to share with you the key learnings of the day. First of all, it's essential that you have the right measurements in place. Without that, you're not yet ready for peak. Secondly, you want to make sure that your retailers are easily discoverable with search, with the use of dynamic search ads, as well as uh, broad match keywords with smart bidding. Then you also want to make sure that uh, you show the right ads to the right persons at the right times with the help of responsive search ads as well as smart shopping campaigns. We learned that on average you can expect a 30% increase in conversion value when switching from standard shopping campaigns to smart shopping campaigns. And during peak, during Black Friday, you can expect this increase to be even higher. Hence, we definitely recommend smart shopping campaigns during the peak period. Then I had the pleasure to talk to two amazing agency leaders who shared with us the importance of already starting right now um, with your peak strategy in order to maximize the returns for your retailers. My YouTube colleagues then shared how you can leverage video action campaigns with product feeds to drive more conversions at lower costs. And then you just heard from Rosita how you can achieve global retail success by spotting expert opportunities with the help of Market Finder. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Please take a moment to fill in our feedback survey, which you can find either on the right or left side of the screen. And also please have a look at our resources section where you can find even more interesting information on how to get ready for the peak period. Thanks so much and wish you all a great day.